So the BMW M57 replaced the M51. It's a straight six turbo diesel engine. Initially, it had a very strong cast iron block, which was later replaced with an aluminium block with cast iron sleeve. So those early blocks are highly sought after just because they're perceived as being much stronger and can tolerate much higher tuning levels. It had a small sequential turbo and really felt like a naturally aspirated engine. There was virtually no turbo lag on it, which was really BMW's aim when they built the M57 engine. They wanted it to feel like a much bigger capacity, naturally aspirated engine. And that's certainly something that they've managed to achieve. Simple remaps will add about 80 horsepower to the stock engine, which is phenomenal. If you can just buy a car, take it in somewhere and get it remapped, which will cost you sort of three to 600, depending on your local current and where you are, you'll get an extra 80 horsepower, which you will certainly notice. So we strongly recommend that you think about getting this remount, even if you don't do any other mods to the engine. <laughs> So the M57 actually came in various different capacities. It was a 2.5, a 2.9 and a 3 litre capacity version of this engine. So we're going to do a set because that's quite a special engine and there's a few very detailed specific things that we need to discuss on that but this is a general guide to all of the m57 engines my apologies for its lateness it was requested quite a long time ago but i've been trying hard to do a lot of research get a lot of feedback from people on this to make sure that i try and cover all the bases but please drop a comment let me know what you've done to yours what mods you think work which are ineffective and if you disagree with me, please let me know. I love hearing people's feedback and their own experiences of tuning the M57 engine. The 2.5 litre M57 D25 was fitted in the BMW E39, but also the Vauxhall Amiga, or the Opel Amiga, if you were in Europe. The E60, E61 got a TU revision of this engine, the M57 D25 TU. The M57 D30 was fitted in quite a range of different cars. The 530D, the 330D, the 730D, and it appeared in the X5, a three litre diesel version. And then there was the TU, the TU2, and the TOP top version of this engine, which appeared in other variants, but that was generally restricted to the three litre version, which we're gonna detail in the other video. So when we talk, so if you've got the 286 brake horsepower variant, you can push that to 365 horsepower, but you may need to upgrade the intercooler as well. That may become a restriction in the system. So the stock M57 came equipped with a Garrett GT 2552 V turbo. The TU revision saw a Garrett GT 2265 VK. So when we talk about mods, we're not just gonna get enthusiastic about a mod because we're being paid or because there's peer pressure, because everyone's doing this mod, it doesn't necessarily make it good. What I look for in a mod for my M57 engine is one that gives a really good return on the investment. I want the car to be more fun to drive. I want it to be reliable as well. I certainly don't want to compromise the reliability just for the sake of power. So it's fair to say that I tend to err on the side of caution when I give tuning advice, and it's no different on the M57, but it's phenomenally strong. It's a great base to start with. So you can actually do quite a lot to bump the power up without restricting any of that reliability or the longevity of the engine. So just remapping the engine is by far and away the biggest change you can make. So what about that easy 300 horsepower? Well, a remap, changing the map inside the computer makes a lot of sense on this engine. It does seem that BMW have deliberately detuned it, whether that's to allow them to sell the gasoline or petrol powered variants, or whether it's just to meet emissions regulations or they, they've got other reasons. But bear in mind that when a manufacturer puts a map on an engine, they take into account the various environments it's going to be used in. So if a car's sold across Europe and in other parts of the world, they usually take the lowest common denominators in all cases, the worst weather conditions, the worst fuel available, and they just make sure that their engine will run reliably on that. So they do build in a wide margin for error and for problems to crop up so the engine can cope with that and keep moving. So with a remap, what you're doing is you're tightening up those parameters. You're making sure that your engine is fully optimized for the fuel grade you're using. No 
doubt you're gonna keep up with these service intervals and service schedules and keep that car in top condition. So there's no need to back things off in the engine just in case the maintenance hasn't been kept up. And this is really where you start to see the benefits on your engine. So you can get devices that plug into the OBD2 port and allow you to change parameters within the ECU itself. You can take it to a remapper who will download the map off your car, make the necessary changes to it and then re-upload it to your car. Or you can get the car set up on a rolling road where they can dynamically monitor the engine, see exactly what's going on at different load conditions at different RPM levels and really optimize that map. So the rolling road is usually the best option for your car. It releases all the power and if you've done other mods, it's hard to take those into account when you've got an off the shelf map, the sort of map that's better than the manufacturer's map but still not fully optimized for everything else that you've done to your car. There's also tuning boxes that you can get, little piggyback modules. Now there's a lot of really cheap, ghastly units out there that just dump more fuel in. So that will make a bit more power, but a lot more soot. You can have problems with your DPF filters and the engine's life is probably going to suffer as a result of some of those. So make sure it is a decent tuning box. It's got a microprocessor inside and the, the easiest way of telling a cheap tuning box from a better quality one is the number of connectors so a cheap one will typically just connect to the fuel system so there will be just one connection on it but the more complex ones have two or more different connections to interface with other systems on the car and fully optimize it and it will basically act as a, a mini ECU it'll lie to your car's ECU about the sensor readings that are coming in and it may even adjust some of the outputs from the ECU to various components in the car perhaps to drive the fuel system harder to change the timing of the fuel delivery to change the boost profile on the turbo there's lots of things that it can take into account just to fully maximize the amount of power that you get from your engine and when you start pushing so much more air into this M57 engine you really don't want any restrictions there at all you want to maximize the airflow so if you've got the head off it's certainly worth thinking about doing a little bit of porting so when tuning the M57 engine it makes a lot of sense to address the cooling you don't want these engines running hot and that is what they will do if you put too much power through them so upgrade the radiator to a, a better capacity radiator that's able to offer more cooling and upgrade to a better flowing electric water pump which will give you much finer control over the flow rates and help you to keep your M57 engine temperatures down and investing in a decent oil cooler upgrade can also further reduce the problems that you have with these runaway temperatures especially during periods of high RPM driving after you've tuned your M57. I'd be interested to hear your experiences of camshaft upgrades on the M57 so the cam controls the opening and the closing of the valves so altering the duration it makes a significant difference to the power profile you get but the lift allows a little bit more air into the engine you obviously need to make sure there's enough clearance within the engine to increase the lift and with the modern advents of variable valve timing the need for a performance cam is somewhat reduced so i know a lot of people are saying not to touch the cams unless you really have to or unless you're taking it into a motorsport environment but i'd be really curious to know what's worked for you on yours and then we can pass this information on to our viewers and share it with our members in our forum. So a key to any tuning project is burning more fuel, which you need more air. So if you can get more air into your engine and match that with more fuel, you'll make more power. It really is as simple as that, but there are limits and restrictions. So the aim with your tuning project is to remove those restrictions as much as possible. So on the head itself, you've got the swirl flaps, which swirl the air as they go into the engine. They aid the low end economy. They're not on all the time. They only come on at certain conditions that the engine is running under. So we do recommend a swirl flap delete on these engines. Those swirl flaps are a potential problem and bottleneck later in the system, but they can be problematic. They can be prone to break. So a lot of people will just whip out those swirl flaps, but they do improve emissions. They do improve the economy. And there are swirl flap removal kits around, which make the job overall a lot easier. One of the best upgrades in terms of power is a turbo upgrade. So hybrid turbo turbos take the stock turbo and replace the internal components to give you more spool up or to compress more air 
So they're a good option because a hybrid turbo generally just bolts on. So as long as you've got the mapping with the fueling and everything else right in the engine to take into account the new airflow characteristics, you'll be able to make significantly more power. So we see with turbo upgrades, people hitting the 350 to 400 brake horsepower region on the M57 engine, which is significant. You'll notice that the air sensor often struggles at these higher boost levels. So upgrading the turbo may also require some adjustments to the airflow metering system that the engine uses. Otherwise, you'll either get errors or you'll be under fueling and you'll hit flat spots and other problems. So typical rail pressure on these is about 1600 bar. So really you need to get that up to about 2000 bar for these higher power figures when you started tuning and you're expecting a lot more performance from the engine. Later versions of the M57 were fitted with a system that runs at about 2,700 bars. So sourcing that is obviously a good upgrade. It's pretty much a bolt-on upgrade. So a lot of the work has already been done by BMW's research and design team. You will find round about the 350 horsepower mark that the original fuel pump that BMW supplied will start to struggle to maintain those high pressures. So a rule of thumb is always to add about 20% to the capacity of your fuel system to deliver fuel. So you've got a little bit of leeway and that takes into account the aging fuel system and just make sure that you never start to starve the engine of fuel when it needs it most. So when it comes to exhaust upgrades, bear in mind the M57 is a rather lazy, low RPM torque machine. So it's not pushing out substantial amounts of exhaust gases. Fitting a cat back exhaust will make almost zero difference to the power that you get from your engine. The typical restrictions tend to be in the catalyst, the DPF filters, the downpipes as well. So if you can optimize those, you'll generally release a little bit more power and maybe get that power coming on a little bit earlier in the RPM range. So you need to check if it's legal to do that in your area because not all regions allow you to change the DPFs or the catalysts and even replacing them with sports alternatives is not permitted in some areas but if if you can replace it with a sports alternative and you'll see the benefits of that so the sports alternatives tend to be slightly larger and they flow better than those stock factory ones so you don't get that restriction in the system so when you put the m57 on a dyno and taken the dpf off you'll see it sucks about 15 brake horsepower from the overall peak power that you get now that sounds a lot but when you think Think about how much power that engine is already putting out that's a fairly insignificant amount of power to lose and we notice that a lot of people who've had other problems such as carbon buildup and have been substantially down on power haven't even noticed it just because these engines are so powerful to start with so in terms of breaking the law and risking fine citations or getting your car impounded and the, the cost of having the work done removing the cat or getting a sports alternative i don't really recommend that as a, a mod it's just not that viable for most people for most of our viewers you can put that money to better use doing some of the other mods that we mentioned and you will make a noticeable difference to your m57 so the air intake is another area that people often focus on so the factory paper filter and the air intake can be restrictive particularly where you've mapped it and added more power so in most cases you'll release a little bit more top end power by getting a better flowing intake on your bmw m57 engine and some people have gone for the full open cone filters but do make sure these get a good supply of cold air from outside if they're just sucking in warm engine bay air it's going to be carrying less oxygen so you will be slightly down on power and it's really just a false economy for the sake of sourcing and siting a cold air feed and maybe boxing off that cone filter from the engine bay you'll see an actual benefit from having that mod done to your m57 Again, please let me know your experiences of cone filters and upgrades on the induction system on your M57 engine so we can pass that tip on to our other viewers. So a lot of people have just recommended replacing the stock factory one with a high performance, better flowing sports filter. These are typically made from a cotton gauze material, which gives decent filtering characteristics but also it isn't as restrictive as the factory paper ones. So you get a little bit more performance out of your engine. The added benefit is that a lot of these aftermarket performance filters are washable. So once you've bought it and invested in it, you've pretty much got it for life. You just need to keep it properly maintained. 
So when you've tuned your M57, please look after it. Make sure you keep up with the service intervals. Maybe shorten them slightly. If you've dramatically increased the power, it would certainly make sense to reduce the oil change schedule. So you're changing the oil a little bit more frequently and do use good quality oil. These engines will really struggle if you've got low grade oil. The engines are working really hard. There's a lot of torque and a lot of power going on inside the engine. So I certainly wouldn't skimp on servicing these because you'll often have problems where people have neglected the car. So if you were buying one, just make sure it's got a full service history and there's evidence that it's been properly looked after and cared for. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. We'd love you to stay tuned and please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.